Hey you guys, this is Eric from Lakeshore. If your home is anything like mine, you probably have an endless list of chores that need to get done. So today, I wanted to share with you some simple ideas on how you can have your kids help out with some of those chores while incorporating learning at the same time. All right, let's start with an easy one especially for those of you with younger ones in preschool or kindergarten. You can teach some really important math skills like sorting and classifying while they help you with chores like putting away the dishes or sorting the laundry before and after the wash. So let's start with the first example. Try letting your kids be in charge of putting away utensils. Spoons and forks and butter knives are great for kids to help with since they're not fragile and they won't break if they're dropped. Now, a word to the wise. I don't know about you, but I usually ask my kids to wash their hands before they put away the dishes because you never really know where those hands have been. Um, so this activity can start off as a super simple matching activity where kids are simply matching forks to forks, spoons to spoons, and knives to knives. Now, you can take the level of this activity up a notch simply by making it open-ended. And what I mean by open-ended is simply asking your child, hey, what are some different ways you can sort these utensils? And when you ask a question like that, kids will naturally analyze the attributes of the utensils. And they might notice, hey, I see that the utensils come in different sizes. So they might sort all the small spoons, small forks, small knives in one pile, large spoons, large forks, and large knives in a separate pile. <laughs> now I realize uh, that's probably not the way that you and I would prefer our utensils to be sorted for everyday use, but that's a completely valid way to sort. Um, and you can keep this open-ended activity going uh, simply by asking uh, your child to continue to find different ways to sort the utensils. So um, you could say, hey, that's great. I see that you sorted the large utensils in one pile and the small ones in another. Is there a different way you could sort these utensils? And kids might then notice that the different types of utensils um, come in different sizes as well. So they'll sort, um, perhaps they'll sort the large knives separately from the small ones, uh, the large dinner forks separately from the salad forks, uh, the tablespoons and the teaspoons separately. Okay, here is one more simple chore your younger ones can help out with. Have your kids sort the laundry before and after the wash. So before the dirty laundry goes into the washing machine, have your kids sort the darks and the lights separately. And then when the laundry is done, have them match up just like they matched up the utensils when they helped you put away the dishes, have them match up socks and pair those up. So these activities are great because they're learning math, they're helping you out, and these are just super practical life skills that uh, kids can all benefit from. Okay, how about some chores that take your kids outdoors? I have a couple boys, one in second grade, one in fifth grade, and they help me pull out weeds like this dandelion right here. And for every dandelion that they pull out, they earn some points, which they can later trade in for a treat or a prize. And believe it or not, pulling weeds is a great way to practice math, as well as learn some science along the way as well. So how do you incorporate math into pulling weeds? Let's say, for example, I've agreed to award my son 10 points for every weed pulled. And at the end of the day, he pulls 11 weeds altogether. So we would then use math to figure out the total number of points that he earns. So you could just get us a piece of paper like I got here and write down the number of weeds that they pulled, which was 11, and the number of points per weed we agreed upon, which was 10 points. And then if your child is younger, let's say first or second grade, um, you could skip count to figure out the total number of points. And when I say skip count, I mean counting by tens for every weed pulled. And you could use 
tally marks to represent those weeds. So you would do you would count out 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110 points total. And then if your child is older, uh, third, fourth, fifth grade, and they know their multiplication facts, they can multiply the 11 weeds by the 10 points for 110 uh, total as well. And um, when, they're, when your child's done with all these chores, whether it's putting away the dishes or sorting the laundry or pulling weeds, um, you could make a really simple chore chart uh, like this and record all the points that they earned during the week. So they earned 110 points here for pulling the weeds. And at the end of the week, tally up, total up all the points. And then your child can trade in those points for a fun prize or a treat, uh, maybe a movie night, or maybe going out for ice cream. So there you have it, you guys. There are so many learning opportunities for kids while doing chores at home. I hope you enjoyed this learning at home video. Post a picture or a video to hashtag learn with Lakeshore. We would love to see your kids learning at home while doing chores. And be sure to subscribe to the Lakeshore Learning Channel to see more. Until next time, keep on learning. Keep watching our learning at home videos. Plus visit lakeshorelearning.com for thousands of free resources.